Well, I know a lot of people have asked, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it to you. We are headed out uh, to drill a well today, and I'm gonna try to record some of the content. I'm gonna put on a microphone, see if it works, and uh, see if we can drown it out some of the background noise, and uh, kind of take y'all along with us as we drill one. So, hope you enjoy. Well, we are almost here at the job site. Driving this top-heavy drill rig is so nerve-wracking. So before I just pull on in, I'm gonna go ahead and get out. We're gonna look at the job site and we're gonna determine whether or not we have to back in or pull in because we don't wanna pull in and then realize we have to turn around. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at it. So at this point, what we're doing is we are pulling out our drill steel in order to install the 6 inch PVC casing. This is going to be the first 20 foot stick that goes in. We're going to glue on the 40 foot section here and we're going to lower it. Now we attempt to glue on the 60 foot section. That goes all the way down but it stops a little short from the table. So what that means is the bottom 20 foot section has collapsed on me. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm pushing on the PVC casing, but I can only push so much. So most uh, well drillers uh, in situations like this, they would install metal casing. But we don't install metal casing in our area. We just typically use PVC, and we're most adept to work with that. So what I'm going to do here, I'm 20 foot shy on my casing set. I have 60 feet in the hole, and I need to install 80 feet to get it to the bottom. So what I'm doing right now is I am washing in the casing as you just saw it fall. So I'm going to wash it all the way down to the bottom, and then I'm going to come all the way back out. We're going to pull the drill steel, and then we're going to take a flashlight, and we're going to shine it down the hole. We're going to actually be able to physically see the coupling that is down in the bottom, and then we are going to uh, pick up the remainder 20 feet of casing and we're actually going to glue on an additional five feet that way we have the ability to manipulate the casing from the uh, table height if we were to just install the entire 20 foot piece we'd be working really really low to the ground as you can see here we uh, have uh, successfully installed the casing and we are going to install the six inch hammer now and i'm going to begin the drilling process we encountered hard rock on this job at about 7 feet. Then around 9 to 10 feet, we encountered nothing but sand all the way down to about 62 feet. So once you are done setting casing and you begin the drilling process, your hopes is to start hitting blue-gray granite. As you can tell, we hit blue-gray granite right there at 80 feet. Actually, we encountered granite somewhere in the mid-60 range, but I wanted to make sure I had about a 15-foot socket. All right, so our inspector's here, so we had to stop to where we could uh, grout and make the state happy. But as you can see, I ran into an abundance, an absolutely large amount of sand down in the ground. You can tell the color difference between this and this. This is granite, and I've only drilled about five foot into it. But I hit granite somewhere around like 62 feet, and uh, that was when my chain stopped going down really fast. When you encounter sand, you can drill through it really fast, but you can't clear the hole as fast as you can drill through it. So you have to slow down, uh, you know, your drilling to where the hole can stay clean. But when uh, you hit granite, the percussion, the sound of the hammer is totally different from where and when it's drilling through, uh, you know, a sandy mixture. So uh, around 62 foot is where I hit granite and I just kept drilling. Rather than, you know, setting casing five foot into granite, I set casing at 80 foot because I didn't want to run through a layer of rock and then right back into a layer of sand. So I went ahead and drilled 18 more feet and we set 80 foot of casing. But uh, good thing because once I started drilling, that last five foot you saw me drill, that was actually the start of the six inch borehole down there. And you can see as soon as I started, it turned right into beautiful granite. So what we're doing now, we are uh, 
putting in a bentonite grout with a little bit of cement and we're gonna make the inspector happy once we're all done with that then we'll continue the drilling process but so far it's been pretty much in time lapse uh, when I run into sand I really have to focus there's a lot that can go wrong as you can tell uh, the hole did collapse on me so we got in 60 foot of casing and then what we had to do we had to go in and we had to blow the hole if you didn't understand what I was doing, uh, basically the bottom 20 foot, it collapsed somewhere, filled in the bottom 20 foot, so you couldn't get the casing in. So I had to go in uh, inside of it, blow it out, blew the hole clean, the 60 foot of casing fell to the bottom, and you could look down the well with a flashlight and you could see where that coupling was. So, I had a damn spam call right in the middle of that. So uh, basically, you know, we let the casing drop and then we pull out took a little garden hose sprayed down in there to clean the uh the sand out of the coupling but the coupling was beautiful it was right in the center of the hole and uh we glued about another four foot section onto the end of our 20 foot pipe so that's that's what this was and we cut it right there so uh, the reason we could do that so we didn't have to go down here and work our casing we were able to work our casing up uh, at a level that was easier to work with you didn't know like you might end up having to pull it back out you might not be able to hit the hole there's a whole lot of things that could go wrong but um we've done this dozens of times this is just how we do it uh, our rig is set up for you know mud and rock when we run into sand we got to make do with what we got so um i don't really know how it's done in other you know parts of the country and whatnot but this is how we do it we got it done our inspectors are happy and uh once we're done with the grouting process i'll show you that and then uh, we'll continue on for water. The likelihood of getting good water out here is pretty high. We're probably only going to cut this well maybe 200 feet and we're going to probably hit a, a, bu a bunch of water. Um, I don't like grouting this early. I wish we could have grouted, you know, 30 minutes from now. Um, I needed a little bit more chips to go down in the well to help seal the, uh, the base of it. Um, but that's why I threw the gravel in there because the sand is such a fine media It doesn't grab the casing really well at the bottom and block off the uh, you know Your your drive shoe your base of your casing uh, in the bedrock So what we do is we'll take gravel and we'll throw it in there and those gravel You know maybe five six seven handfuls of gravel They act as uh, large chunks and they'll go to the bottom and they'll stay there and they'll basically stay around the the base the seat of the casing and they help it lock off and uh, prevent surface water from flowing in but uh yep all right i'm gonna quit for now we're gonna uh, finish grouting and then uh i'll catch back up with y'all later all right so we have just finished the grouting procedure and just to kind of give everybody an idea we pumped around 13 hoppers of grout down there now typically this should have took somewhere around i don't know six seven maybe eight but because we had so much sand and there was water in with the sand it washed such a large pocket out that's what made it take more grout so the inspector is happy she has gone so i am going to start the process now and fire the rig back up and we're going to continue drilling
quarter till five in the evening. And because we had so much drought to pump, we are almost out of water. Our current depth is right now we are at around 235 feet. So we're going to finish off today at around 250. And then we're probably going to have to come back tomorrow and continue drilling. All right, it is now day two, back the next day, and uh, we're going to continue the drilling process. Uh, we're 265 right now, I believe, and uh, we're going to keep drilling until we hit water. So wish us luck. The first things first, before we do anything, we got to transfer a fuel. Go ahead and fill this thing back up. So we're going to fill it back up with 100 gallons. And then we're going to crank this bad boy up, let her warm up, and then we'll blow the hole clean. So we uh, got our grout protection plate removed and we wanted to see how much the grout had settled from yesterday. So she settled about, I can, casing's pretty firm. I'm gonna say it's probably down there about five foot. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put some more grout in it and fill it to the top. Ain't even take a whole bag. Yeah, I guess it did. It took the whole bag. Yeah, that ain't bad. Cool. Mike, let's dump a little water on top of that. <clears throat> I'm going to say it only settled about three or four feet. I acquired these rock samples for the sake of the video. If you take a look here at the sandy mixture, that was encountered anywhere from 10 to 60 foot. And then if we move on over to the next pile, that is your first indication of solid granite. That was encountered at around 65 foot and continued all the way to about 140. At 140, we ran through a 20-foot vein of this red mixture rock here, and then at around 235 feet, we encountered a very soft zone of this pudding-like rock mixture. So now I'm going to walk you through the process of changing out a drill rod. One of the most important things my father's taught me is always keep your gloves on and always try to keep your work site clean, no matter how you know nasty and gritty and dirty this job is it's very imperative to keep things clean because the hammer down the hole does not like grit so we want to make sure we blow off the drill rod here we are we are exhausting all of the pressurized air out of the hole we are turning off the air compressor 
Now I'm going to go ahead, we're going to unspin the drill rod. We've got the drill rod that's locked in with the, uh, with the table wrench. I'm going to go ahead and grab our grease. I'm going to grease up our top head. I'm going to go ahead and close down the blowdown. The tricky part is lining up the head and hitting it first try. Got it locked in. Now we have to hold it and we're going to use the hydraulics and thread into the drill rod. And now we lift the rod and we're going to slide the sling off. Now we're going to use the jig boom, move it over to the right, send it over to Mike. Mike's going to hook up the next drill rod for me. Mike's only been working with us for about three weeks. So I continuously look over to make sure he's not doing anything that he shouldn't be, keeping his hands clear of all the things. I'm reaching over to grab the drill rod to make it easier for him. Toss the drill cap in the bucket of water to keep it clean. And here we go, we're going to put some more grease on the drill rod. We keep a uh, dirt cover over top of the drill rod until we are ready. Here we are, we're threading it. We don't want to go too hard, got to be easy on those hydraulics. There's a whole lot that went on there. I made sure that the valve was closed. I turned on my water, I turned on my low air, and then I turned on my big air. I'm going to take a putty knife and clean the remainder of the grease between the threads. And I basically wipe it on the wrench so the wrench is, does not stick on the drill rod flats. And we're going to put a 4 inch rubber wiper over it to keep me from getting wet. And we're going to continue on. This is a very important process. We want to make sure that the rotation speed is correct. We want to make sure that we do not feed the drill bit into the rock too fast. We have to be very, very, you know, vanesse is the very key word here with such a brute force, uh, you know, working environment. If you're not careful, you can actually send the drill bit into the rock too fast and you can snap off carbides. So I noticed an audible change in the hammering, so I decided to come up here and take a look at my rotation pressures, and it's up around 600, kind of where it should be. But I thought that the sound of the drilling sounded a little bit different because it's been soft up until this point. So I decided to come down here and take a look at my chips, and to my surprise, I discover we are now in a black granite formation. Black granite is one of the hardest formations to drill in, and unfortunately it slowed the drilling process down. Prior to this we were getting uh, 20 foot drill rods down in about 12 minutes and once you run into black granite your 13 minute 12 minute drill rods turn into 19 and 20 minute drill rods. I decided to come over here and take a look at the water flow and it's not really quite where I wanted it to be. I'm only looking at about three gallons per minute there and I know I'm injecting about two to two and a half gallons per minute. So I'm not very excited for the volume of water that I have coming away from the rig because I know how much I am pumping in and uh, I'm not too excited about it because I only have one drill rod left to go.
So pulling drill rods is probably one of the most dangerous parts of this job. And if anybody's been following my channel for any length of time, you know that I work with my father. Typically my father is the person who is at the controls and I am the person who typically stands there in the middle. Now we are training a new employee, his name is Mike, and I have to give props to Mike. He's only been doing this for about two weeks and he has come pretty natural to it. He is not um, someone who shies away from hard work and as long as you take your time, which I'm forced to take my time because now it's me at the controls, not my father, so I have to move a little bit slower, which kind of helps everybody out because we all have to make sure nobody gets hurt, and, you know, that's that's the main key with a job like this. When you're swinging around 400-pound drill rods, you don't want anybody getting hurt. Now, what we just lowered down there was the over-reamer. The over-reamer is something that we use when we do not have to pump more than 20 feet of grout. We did not need to use that today, so we just simply set it on top of the drill rods. Here we are pulling the hammer out. We're expecting the bit. We're going to go ahead. We put the wing bit in, cut our casing down. We're going to pick up our big 10 inch hammer and we're going to lower the derrick. All right, well, the machine's all laid over. We're all finished. Got to add chlorine to the well. So there were a couple reasons why I wanted to record this well in this neighborhood. And one reason is because I've got a well right over there that's uh, 225 foot and it makes 30 gallons a minute. I've got a well right over at the top. You can probably see the house right there. That well's 165 foot deep and it makes like 50 gallons a minute. And here we are, we're in between both of them, and we're at 400 feet, and we only make a gallon a minute. So that's just a little bit of understanding of, you know, just because your neighbor makes a lot of water doesn't mean you will. <laughs> that's why it's so hard for us to quote jobs when, when you know, we ask, you know, customers want to know, oh, how deep is it? My neighbor's got a 200 footer. Well, I got a 225 and I got a 165 with loads of water, and I'm smack dab in between it, and I just don't have it. Now the construction of this well, because it was a 3B, required 50 foot of casing. We cased out all the sand that was in this well. There was loads and loads and loads of water in that sand. But the problem with that water is it's not high quality. So you would then have, you know, a big filtration system in your house dealing with all that sand. So luckily we got lucky, we cased all that out. Uh, we dealt with that uh, during the beginning part of the construction of the well yesterday. And here we are now, we're about to finish. So another thing that most people don't do is this right here. This tag gives you all of your information, tells you the day it was drilled, the year it was drilled, how deep, the diameter, gallons per minute, the depth of the pump, all that. So I can go back and look in my log and I can tell you everything about this well that I wrote down in my drilling log. I don't know why more drillers don't put information tags on it. It took me about five minutes to make this tag up and I'm just gonna glue it right there on the side of that well. Well, luckily we got off site, didn't have to pull out the toe strap. So we're gonna go ahead now and head on back to the shop. Very few people will ever have the uh, lovely pleasure of driving a drilling rig down the road, but it is absolutely one of the worst experiences ever. This thing is so top heavy. Every corner that you go around makes you nervous as shit. <laughs> 